द मोस्ट आज क्वेश्चन बाय पीपल इन इन्वेस्टिंग आर वॉट शुड बी द आइडियल नंबर ऑफ स्टॉक्स इन वन पोर्टफोलियो एंड हाउ मच शुड वन एलोकेट टू ईच वन स्टॉक शुड इट बी टू स्टॉक्स विद फिफ्टी परसेंट इन ईच स्टॉक और शुड इट बी हंड्रेड स्टॉक्स विद वन परसेंट इन ईच Diversification is a very common term used in investing which means dividing your total money in different investments. Most of the mutual fund and hedge fund owners have more than 50 stocks in their portfolio. Even most of the retail investors on an average has between 30 to 50 stock in one's portfolio and even these mutual funds do not own more than 3 to 5% position in any company. People think that way they have diversified the risk which is mark of a great investor. After all one of the most common jargon you'll hear in investing is do not put your eggs in one basket you will be surprised to know that most of the great and wise investors who have experience of half a century in stock market not only them but even the top 1% richest people in the world of the likes of Warren Buffett Charlie Munger Elon Musk Jeff Bezos Mukesh Ambani and many others made their fortunes by concentrating their portfolios around very few investments with number of stock in the portfolio ranging from one stock to 15 stocks where everyone around us preaching us the idea of diversification with the maxim of don't put your eggs in one basket these people have done just opposite maybe not one but they have definitely put their eggs in very few basket and then wash the basket very carefully concentrated value investing is a little known method of portfolio construction used by very famous value investors mentioned in this book when times are good portfolio concentration is popular because it magnifies gains when times are bad it's often abandoned after the fact because it magnifies volatility It is time to revisit the subject of bet sizing and portfolio concentration as a means to achieve superior long term returns. This is the better investor helping you achieve your financial goals and freedom through organizing your finance, stock market investing and learning from billionaires. And these are top 5 lessons from the book Concentrated Investing Strategies written by Alan C Bennello, Michael Biema and Tobias Carlyle lesson number 1 how legends manage their money before we move on to draw any conclusion that in how many companies you must invest we must first learn how most noble investors businessmen made their or their companies fortune let's take them one by one as mentioned in this book number 1 lao simpson lao simpson was chief investment officer at gaiko which was called as government employees insurance company which warren buffet who is known as the world's greatest investor purchased through his insurance company bakshay hathway this process when a large company buys out a small company is called acquisition warren buffet calls gaiko as one of the best and most important investments ever made by him even though gaiko was acquired by bakshay hathway but warren buffet did not change people in its management and to your surprise Lao Simpson who was the chief investment officer at Gaiko his record from 1979 to 2010 rivals that of Buffet at Berkshire Hathaway but he remains little known except by true Buffet fans like me in 1970s and even today many insurance companies held a diversified portfolio of fixed income securities like FDs bonds etc counting on diversification to minimize risk gaiko was no different till lao simpson took over as he came he put 10% of gaiko's portfolio in stocks which was just 5% before in 1982 gaiko's 280 million dollar of insurance money was in 33 stocks lao simpson then cut it to 20 then to 15 and the number of stocks then always remained between 8 and 10 You'll be surprised to know that in 1980s Gaiko had 6 electric utility companies out of the 10. Simpson would take those big bets only when he thought the odds were well in his favor. To tell you about his track record, his annual average return from 1980 to 2004 is 20.3% per annum, where the index gave just 13.3% per annum. Another investor, John Maynard Keynes John Maynard Keynes was a trader turned investor and an investment officer in UK's insurance company in earlier 20th century. What Lord Simpson was to USA, 
John Maynard Keynes was to UK. When everyone in UK held just 3% of insurance money in stocks, Keynes changed and allocated more than 75% in stocks. 50 to 75% of his stock holdings was just in 5 to 10 stocks, with two thirds of his money would be in one particular industry. According to the book, from 1930 to 1934, he had half of his holdings in just two automobile manufacturers. Austin Motors and Leyland. He grew his investment fund from 1927 to 1940 at the rate of 13% per annum when the UK's equity market gave negative returns of 1%, an outperformance of 14%. Third, how can we talk about all investors and not Warren Buffett? Before Warren Buffett bought into Berkshire Hathaway, he ran his own investment fund. In 1964, he had 40% of his fund's money in just one stock, and that is American Express. Before that, in 1959, he had 35% of his money in one company called Sanborn's Map. Even today, more than 42% of Berkshire Hathaway's portfolio was in just one stock, that is Apple, which he recently sold in March 2021. Buffett's right-hand man, Charlie Munger, also ran an investment fund called Wheeler Munger Partnerships from 1962 to 1975, which returned annual return of 20% within this period, where the US S&P 500 index just gave 5%, an outperformance of 15%. The number of stocks in his fund were, can you guess? They were just three. Last but not the least, Kristen CM, a billionaire investor who is also called as Warren Buffet of Norway made all his money by buying into oil refining, oil exploration and shipping companies. Whenever there was pessimism about oil prices, he bought and when there was optimism, he sold. That is how he made his fortune and that is how he became billionaire. Lesson number 2. How wealth is made? A highly diversified portfolio will have all the companies listed on stock exchange and every company having equal allocation. That means if there are 5000 companies, then there would be 5000 companies in the portfolio too. But for this example, let's just consider 100. So we invest $1 in each 100 stocks. And the highly concentrated portfolio of stocks would mean just one stock and putting all our money into it. If you expect the profits of the company in your concentrated portfolio to double its profit in coming 3 years, then most likely the stock price would also double and that is all you need to double your money. However, in a diversified portfolio, if you would want to double your money, then all the 100 stocks must double their profits in 3 years, which is very difficult because there aren't so many great businesses which can achieve that. However, if any one stock doubles, then that will have no effect in your portfolio. Just that your $100 invested would now be $101. So it is pretty evident that a portfolio of just one carefully selected stock about which you know everything about, about whose business you have an insight, will outperform the diversified portfolio in which you have just put equal money. All of the richest people in the world created their wealth this way. Jeff Bezos had more than 99% of his net worth in the stock of Amazon. Obviously because he was the CEO and who else would know about his company more than him. A similar question was asked to Warren Buffet in his shareholders meeting as to how many stocks does he own in his personal portfolio. And he said he just owns one stock and that is Berkshire Hathaway of which he is CEO of. The reason that almost all of the wealthiest people are businessmen is because almost all of their net worth or money is invested in their own companies about which they know almost everything about. This leads us to a very important conclusion that the path to creating enormous wealth lies in concentration and that all the people who have made it to the list of the richest have done it through concentration and not diversification. Lesson number 3. How many stocks should you own? As said above, the giant wealth creation is done by concentration and not diversification. So is it the best idea to put all your money in just one stock like Warren Buffet has his personal holdings in? Well not. First of all, 
एवरेज इन्वेस्टर इज नॉट द प्रोमोटर और मैनेजर ऑफ अ बिजनेस दस ही वुड नेवर नो अबाउट अ बिजनेस एज मच एज अ मैनेजर नोज अबाउट इट दो दिस इज नो एक्सक्यूज फॉर नॉट स्टडिंग अबाउट बिजनेस ऑफ वंस कंपनी इन डेप्थ हाउ एवर स्टिल देर इज ऑलवेज अ रूम लेफ्ट फॉर द एरर ऑफ जजमेंट टू एर इज ह्यूमन एंड फॉर दिस रीजन इफ यू गो रॉन्ग ऑन योर एनालिसिस ऑन योर वन स्टॉक विच इज द ओनली स्टॉक इन योर पोर्टफोलियो यू वुड एंड अप लूजिंग ऑल योर मनी जस्ट इज सिंपल एंड ईजी इट लुक्स टू क्रिएट वेल्थ इन कॉन्सेंट्रेटेड पोर्टफोलियो इट इज एज ईजी टू लूज इट हाउ एवर इन आर हंड्रेड स्टॉक पोर्टफोलियो इवन इफ अ सिंगल कंपनी इज गोज डाउन टू जीरो दैट वुड जस्ट रिड्यूज योर होल्डिंग्स फ्रॉम हंड्रेड डॉलर टू नाइनटी नाइन डॉलर टू लूज ऑल योर मनी इन अ डाइवर्सिफाइड पोर्टफोलियो ऑल ऑफ योर स्टॉक्स मस्ट गो डाउन टू जीरो विच इज हाईली अनलाइकली दस वी रीच टू वन मोर इंपॉर्टेंट कंक्लूजन दैट अ केयरलेसली सेलेक्टेड कॉन्सेंट्रेटेड पोर्टफोलियो इज एट हायर चांसेस ऑफ डिस्ट्रॉइंग ऑल ऑफ योर वेल्थ देन एन एवरेज हंड्रेड डॉलर डाइवर्सिफाइड पोर्टफोलियो दस फॉर अ नो नथिंग इन्वेस्टर हु डज नॉट हैव टाइम टू रीड अबाउट बिजनेस टॉक टू इट्स एम्प्लॉयज रीड एंड अंडरस्टैंड फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट्स ऑफ अ कंपनी द बेस्ट ऑप्शन फॉर हिम विल बी अ डाइवर्सिफाइड पोर्टफोलियो because his lack of time and interest would never let him have true and justified conviction about one particular business this concentrated investing is not for him and thus the no nothing investor must also then not try to have above average returns he must be satisfied with mediocre and average results even the greatest investor and the great companies all practice diversification because they know that even though they know everything about the company still there may be events which may happen in our world about which we never thought of which can damage the business so that even if one thing is damaged the other survives but mind you again the diversification does not mean selecting 50 such avenues but rather diversifying into 3 to maximum 15 avenues one of the greatest indian business tycoon mukesh ambani who is the richest indian in the world may just have one stock in his portfolio which is reliance but reliance itself has diversified its business into oil refining telecommunication retail and media so he may be owning just one stock of reliance from far but when you go closer he owns these other businesses as well similarly warren buffet in his personal portfolio may be owning just one stock that is berkshire hathaway but the insurance company berkshire hathaway itself has investment in other companies like apple coca cola etc so just owning many number of stocks is not diversification and owning just one stock of a business which is already diversified may be good enough diversification lesson number 4 fluctuation in stock price is not risk one of the greatest learning which all the great investors preach is that the daily fluctuation of stock price is not risk at all which most of the people think it is all these great investors appreciated fluctuations as they gave these people chance to buy the stock of the company they like if by any chance the price dropped suddenly for no reason at all they believe that the only risk a value investor may be worried about is the risk of permanent loss of capital however if you see risk as deviation from the average then the study by elton and gruber in 1977 is very famous in investing and is also mentioned in the book it suggests that as the number of stocks in a portfolio increases the deviation or fluctuation in overall portfolio reduces which means that a portfolio of one stock will fluctuate more than the portfolio of two stocks and as the number of stocks increases the fluctuation reduces as you can see from this chart the fluctuation reduces considerably as we keep on adding stocks to it up to say 20 stocks and beyond that even if we increase it to 1000 or infinity there is hardly any change from the fluctuation that we were seeing with our 15 to 20 stocks thus even if we consider fluctuation as a risk even then going beyond 15 to 20 stocks in one's portfolio is of no significant use keeping in mind how much more you would have to read about these companies in limited 24 hours that a human has in his day thus Most of the great investors kept themselves within this bracket of 3 to 15 stocks. Charlie Munger, the vice chairman of Berkshire Hathaway, the right-hand man of Warren Buffet, just had 3 stocks in his portfolio, and he said 
that it is highly unlikely that in a portfolio of three very carefully selected stocks, all three will go bust together. And that for him was a good enough diversification. Lesson number five, the Kelly's formula. After we are clear the effects of diversification and concentration and how many stocks in portfolio is good enough, the most important lesson from the book is that how concentrated should you be on any one stock. Which means if you own 5 stocks, then should you put 20% equally in each or 10 in some and 20 in some. Kelly formula is a mathematical formula used in probability. However, let's not get into mathematics. What Kelly formula basically means is that whenever an investor has superior insight or surety that chances of success of a particular business is high, then the amount of money you invest in the stock of that business must also be high. Which means in a portfolio of 5 stocks, you must put the most and biggest amount of money in the stock that you are most confident about. Warren Buffett said that, it is a foolish idea to put your money in your 20th best idea. Let us understand this with a small thought experiment. Suppose there is a betting house where there are two bets playing. The first bet. A person tells you in the month of extreme summer in the deserts of Thar to predict whether it will snow in the coming week or not. And he tells you that if you get it right, you take home 10 times your money and if you get it wrong, you lose it all. The second game is to predict in the same summer month in the Thar Desert whether the temperature will cross 30 degrees Celsius by 9 o'clock in the morning. How much percentage of money would you spend and on which bet? I'll wait for your answer. Obviously your answer must be first bet because the chances of snowing in a summer month in a desert is zero in the coming week. We do not know what will happen after 10,000 years but for now you can be 100% sure that you will win the first bet and thus you must put all your money in the first bet and if you are a fan of leverage then you can take as much leverage as you want because you will not lose. However, you cannot do the same thing with the second bet. First of all, if these are the only two bets available then you must not even look at the second bet. So using Kelly formula an investor knows that he must concentrate his money in the company's stock about which he has great insights and confidence on. In 1959, American Express name had come in a very famous scandal of that time called the salad oil scandal and market was punishing the stock price. Warren Buffett during those times used to run an investment fund called Buffett Partnerships. He quickly called up all the customers of the American Express, read about the business and found out that the company is great and the news reports were nothing but false acquisitions and media rumors. And even if the scandal was real, the company had good business which in the long run would not be affected by a scandal. Buffett then put 40% of the fund's money in American Express, the price of which grew 100 times in less than next 20 years. Thus when such opportunity shows up to you where the chances of you losing is negligible, you must pile on your money in that investment. Thus we come to another conclusion that there is no statistical formula which can tell you how much of the money should be put in which company. But in a very subjective way, Kelly formula tells us that the biggest part of your investment must be in a company's stock about which you are most confident about. And no money must be put in a stock where chances of you winning is less than 50% that is worse than the flip of coin, no matter how big the reward is. For this, we must not forget the word of Warren Buffet. During the penalty shootout, the football team captain has to choose the top 5 players on whom he is most confident about to hit the ball in the goal. Investing is no different. Let's have a quick recap. There are many smart money managers, but very few of them who outperform the market returns for a very long time. One of the most important traits of these great money managers was that they held very few stocks and these were those on whose prospects they were most confident about. The path to create humongous amount of wealth is concentration. A carefully selected single stock portfolio will outperform a diversified portfolio. A carelessly selected concentrated portfolio is most likely to destroy all your wealth than a diversified one. 
Concentration can be dangerous if not done in the right way. So for a know nothing investor who do not aspire to read about a business, it is in his best interest to diversify his investments. Fluctuation in stock price is not risk. The real risk is permanent loss of capital. All great investors saw fluctuation as an opportunity to buy their favorite stock at a cheap price. However, even if we consider it as a risk, we come to know that the fluctuation in portfolio reduces as we increase the stocks from 1 to 15. Owning more than 15 stocks have no practical impact on controlling the fluctuation which comes at the cost of reading more about these companies which may be a burden on attention and mental peace of an investor. The amount of money that you must put in one stock must be directly proportional to the confidence you have in the prospect of that company. The better the prospect the higher the money in that stock. All these investors beat the index because investing to them was like a football penalties shootout. They only selected the best players to score their goals. And as I end this episode, I am reminded of very wise words of Charlie Munger mentioned in this book. He says, "It's not given to human beings to have such talent that they can just know everything about everything all the time, but it is given to human beings who work hard at it." who look and sift the world for a misplaced bet that they can occasionally find one and the wise ones bet heavily when the world offers them that opportunity they bet big when they have the odds and the rest of the time they don't they do nothing it's just that simple that's it guys if you like the video please like share and subscribe you can also watch my video on financial euphorias of past which is very interesting read i will come again with the lessons on some other investing books soon until then cheers guys